you were working on putting together a paper that focused around antibiotic use in the swine industry and, and more importantly, trying to compile all the papers that we have with antibiotics and antibiotic alternatives and trying to kind of assess efficacy, if you will. So could you maybe recap to our audience who may not be familiar with, with that work, just what you found in general? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this, actually, this was not related to my graduate work. This was uh, kind, of, kind of a left turn. Um, a lot of my graduate work was with uh, PERS and PED, and then Nick had, had come to my office, asked if this was something that I wanted to do. Um, so a little note to grad students, you know, don't be afraid to, to take an opportunity if there is one. Um, but yeah, really what we did, compiled all the information that was published on antibiotic alternatives. And that encompasses a lot of different things. So we tried to break it into different categories in a very broad sense. So we had probiotics, prebiotics, uh, ligosaccharides, you know, zinc oxide, copper sulfate, um, a, a lot of different categories. I think we ended up with nine categories and did a literature search uh, from 1990 until at that time would have been through 2016. And initially, you know, we started uh, sorting through about 24,000 papers uh, and kind of whittled it down to about a thousand that met the criteria that we were looking for. And that criteria was uh, performance. So average daily gain, average daily feed intake or feed efficiency or mortality. You know, if it mentioned any of those things, then we kept it. Um, and it, got a lot of questions you know hindsight should have done a meta-analysis on it but it was really a literature search or a literature review um because it wasn't tied to my graduate work so this is just kind of a, a special project um and really what we found is not everything works 100 percent of the time um is as much as we wanted one one silver bullet or one ingredient or or maybe even a couple ingredients to replace antibiotics um, because this was ahead of the VFD, which was being implemented in uh, January 1st of 2017. So we were really looking for that alternative, you know, here's, here's the secret sauce, here's the magic, magic ingredients that's going to make it, you know, seamless transition and going to make it work. Um, you know, a couple highlights out of that, I guess, uh, zinc oxide and copper sulfate improved performance about 40% of the time. And probiotics did about the same. Um, you know, there's there's probably some publication bias. This was academic settings for a lot of it. Uh, there's, I'm sure, on the probiotic side, at least, there's a lot of things that didn't get published. Um, you know, coming through grad school, do a lot of projects that may or may not get published, depending on the results. So, um, but yeah, it was it was really interesting. You know, performance was was really the metric we were looking at once we got into health. Um, and kind of survivability, mortality, not a lot of studies reported it. Um, I know that's been a discussion at a lot of, of recent conferences, uh, especially ahead of the mortality conference uh, coming up in October. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely underreported and kind of shined a light on we've got a long ways to go before we're going to get all the performance back that we lost. <laughs> 